on N1. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Stormwatch. I'm Sharon Rizalton. Along with the stormy weather in the U.S., we're going to discuss what's going on in the tropics. And there is a lot to discuss as far as the Pacific is concerned. We'll start you out first with our tropical update and take a look first at the Atlantic Basin. And just looking at this satellite, you might think, well, gee, things look kind of active out there. From a surface perspective, from a convection expect uh, perspective, it is rather active. There's a lot to talk about with a little wave moving through the islands, another area here here into the Caribbean and another little uh, disturbed area out here toward the eastern Atlantic. But you know something? The westerlies are so strong that none of these at this point in time have a chance to develop. Interesting to see that we've had a lot of convection across this area for the past week or so. And under that circumstance, usually we tend to watch this area very closely. Warm sea surface temperatures, convection over the same area day after day. But as long as those westerlies are very strong, we don't have to worry about any development. It's possible, though, that those westerlies could weaken with time. And that's why we need to kind of keep an eye on things and certainly not let our guard down. Into the eastern Atlantic we go and we see a few more waves moving off the coast of Africa. But again, everything kind of getting sheared. And you can see how some of these clouds are getting pushed off to the east as the waves themselves try and move on westward. The eastern Pacific is where it's hot. We've got uh, a couple of hurricanes to discuss here. First of all, Lester, very visible eye here. Hurricane Lester, and there are the coordinates, 270 miles southeast of Acapulco, Mexico. Uh, sustained winds of 100 miles per hour. It's moving to the west at 6, and the estimated central pressure, 973 millibars. Uh, hurricane watches are up from Zihuatanejo, Mexico, back down toward Acapulco. And uh, hurricane warnings from Acapulco back down toward Salina Cruz. So uh, we are watching for the potential for uh, some dangerous flooding conditions as this is very close to the coast. And because it is so close, any slight change in direction could cause it to make landfall. So we'll certainly have to keep an eye out for that. It continues that uh, westward movement, maybe even looks like a little bit of a wobble almost further southward, but that's uh, quite possibly just a wobble. But you can see how the convection is fired up right around that center of circulation. It's very symmetric looking and, in fact, a very uh, good looking from some perspective, from a satellite perspective, Category 2 hurricane. The threat here, again, is going to be the winds because of the close proximity to Mexico. And we're also concerned about the rain, especially the fact that this is such a slow mover and it's likely to produce a tremendous amount of tropical moisture, tropical rain across this area. And we'll have to keep an eye out for a very big flooding threat. So we'll be watching this very, very closely. Second problem out here in the Pacific, well, when's the last time we could say that we had two hurricanes threatening one landmass? Folks in Mexico really have to be on the watchful eye here. This is Hurricane Madeline. Sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. This one's moving northeast at 5. It is expected to make landfall maybe by Tuesday. Um, not too far, maybe from Mazatlan. That remains to be seen. But you can see where the hurricane watches and warnings are in effect here. This one not quite as organized as Lester. It had been undergoing quite a bit of shear. We're starting to see some of that convection trying to wrap around that center of circulation. But again, because of its close proximity, we need to worry about winds and we need to worry about the potential for flooding. Remember, there's lots of higher terrain across this area. And with that higher terrain, we'll talk about a lot of that upslope, really squeezing the moisture out of those clouds, and you end up with flooding and mudslides. So two very big concerns as we head into the Eastern Pacific for those folks in Mexico. Out here into the Western Pacific, we've got Babs moving across the Philippines, maybe taking a very similar course to its predecessor, Zeb that caused uh, devastating floods here in the Philippines and devastating wind damage. Zeb, by the way, caused a lot of flooding up into Taiwan and then moved almost the entire extent across Japan and now becoming extra tropical at this time as it moves over some cooler water. Back home to the lower 48, flooding problems here too. Boy, this is just, I feel like the bearer of bad news, but we've had some devastating floods here too into Texas, relentless rains, and unfortunately, another fatality due to a tornado. I believe about four fatalities 
three due to flooding and one due to a tornado in Texas on Saturday. Still the potential for a few strong storms, but we haven't had a lot of severe reports as of late. Very real threat for flooding. Please never cross a water-covered roadway. Take it easy out there overnight. Perfect fall conditions dominate most of the U.S., but it's far from perfect from the Midwest to Texas. An update on the threat of flooding and severe thunderstorms is next on Weather Center. Even the cutest pets can be little stinkers. So use Arm & Hammer Carpet & Room Deodorizer with the power of baking soda. Look, our odor detector shows strong pet odors. It's 10 before the hour on this Sunday morning. Time for Storm Watch. And in a moment, we'll look, a look, uh, we'll look at some heavy rain, which continues in uh, Texas with extensive flooding now, San Antonio to Austin. And the rains continue to come on down. That's one uh, major weather story today. Let's begin with the tropics, however, and take a look at the Atlantic Basin, first of all, which continues to be very quiet as upper-level westerlies have dipped down into the tropical region and are making conditions unfavorable for any significant organization at this time. Out to, uh, the, uh, the, to, the, to the east, off the west coast of Africa, we see signs of uh, the high-level shearing winds in the upper-level cloud elements moving southwest to northeast. So any tropical waves coming west in the mid and low-level easterly flow off the African continent are not showing any signs of organization. In fact, in the eastern Atlantic, the tropical season may just simply be be over at this point. Here in the mid-tropical South Atlantic, again watch the upper level clouds streaming west to east, shearing winds, clusters of storms out here, lots of uh, thunderstorm activity. However, with the upper level winds so strong, it's unlikely any significant organization will take place. There's in fact a dip in the jet stream here and there's another one out over the Western Caribbean which is shearing this area with southwesterly upper level winds. So despite the fact we have impressive uh, convection or thunderstorms, a cluster of them down here, it's unlikely that any further development will take place because of the upper level uh, wind field south of Cuba and south of Jamaica in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. However, on the Pacific side, we've got some action. We've got a couple hurricanes for you. This is Lester, right down here, not too far from Acapulco, and this is Madeline. Uh, south of the tip of Baja, California. Let's get some coordinates for you. First of all, Lester, a small but impressive hurricane. Top sustained winds, one in Austin, and another area of heavy rain here south of Waco. Actual amounts, San Antonio, a foot and a half of rain so far, and there's more to come. Stick around after your local forecast. We'll have more on the flooding in Texas. How can you plan your day when you don't know what the weather is going to be like? I know people like to plan ahead for their day. I can help you out. The jobs of tomorrow are here. Thousands of them waiting to be filled. But you have to know the fields they're in. And you have to have what it takes to master those fields. Because you can't get the jobs of tomorrow until you get the skills of today. Start by calling ITT Technical Institute for an informative brochure. Call 1-800-823-6313. 1-800-823-6313. Call now. You know, I've been thinking, and I'm thinking that thinking's not enough. These days, you also have to be a doer, a hands-on troubleshooter. Thanks for joining us here at the Weather Channel. I'm Marshall Cease. You turned just in time for Storm Watch. We still have a tornado warning in effect for the next five minutes for Chambers County, Texas. A flash flood warning has just been issued for Chambers County, Texas as well. 
and we have a tornado warning in effect for Jasper and Orange counties in southeast Texas. We'll detail that for you coming up after your tropical update. We have several things to talk about in the tropics. Let's begin with the tropical update this morning and take a look at the uh, big picture. Notice in the Atlantic a couple of areas of disturbed weather. These are kind of the same areas we've been watching for over a week now and none of which have developed one in the Caribbean Sea here, and it's a climatologically favorable area for development if you get something going. And we also have an area of disturbed weather out here, a tropical wave, that's just kind of lodged over near the Lesser Antilles, providing some squally weather for that area, but all being influenced by an upper level low pressure system that is causing winds to be out of the west-southwest and shearing the thunderstorms that do develop apart so they can't get their act together, so tropical storm formation is unlikely in the near term. And if anything were to occur of that nature, it would be slow to occur. On the west side of Mexico, we have Hurricane Madeline. Madeline is acting as a moisture pump, pulling p tropical Pacific moisture across old Mexico into Texas, where we've got flooding in South Texas and in Southeast Texas now. And then we also have Hurricane Lester, which uh, has not weakened much, although it's lost its eye definition. We'll detail these for you as uh, we go on in your tropical update. First, out here in the Caribbean, showers and thunderstorms developing again in the Caribbean Sea, south of Cuba, as we've seen for uh, several days now, but no potential in the near term for tropical storm formation. So that's good news. And uh, the wave over the Lesser Antilles not developing either. And we can say goodbye to the Cape Verde season off the coast of Africa. Very hostile uh, environment for anything to get going out in this area as water temperatures cool and we move through the change of seasons and you get these upper level systems that affect the weather off the African coast. Off the Mexican coast though we have two hurricanes and notice out here you have what was K. Uh, K no longer a feature to be reckoned with but these two are both Madeline and Lester are hurricanes and both are affecting the coast of Mexico with flooding kinds of rains and uh, we expect heavier rain from these systems as they continue to near the coast. The one to the north at any rate, Madeline will, Lester will not. Lester is actually moving westward now. We'll take a look at Western or at Lester first. The eight o'clock advisory centers it at 14.5 north and 98.1 west. That's about 190 miles southeast of Acapulco. Uh, last advisory was about 180 miles or 160 miles away from the coast. So we're getting further away from the coast with those 100 mile an hour winds. It's moving west about eight miles per hour and its barometric pressure 973 millibars. Now we still have hurricane warnings in effect from Salina Cruz to Acapulco and from Acapulco to Zihuataneo we have hurricane watches in effect and it is causing heavy rain to fall along the coast although because it's a very tightly packed system the hurricane force winds only extend out about 30 nautical miles so that's good news for the coast in terms of winds but you can still get potentially uh, flooding rains and mudslides uh, could be a problem once again. Madeline is moving a different direction. It's drifting to the north, winds at 80 miles per hour. It is centered at 20.6 north and 106.5 west, 145 miles south of Mazatlan, Mexico. Barometric pressure 985 millibars and the entire southern tip of the Baja is under a hurricane watch and from Los Mochis, Mexico to Mazatlan we have hurricane watches in effect. From Mazatlan to Islas Marias we have a hurricane warning in effect. This is is a big troublemaker and could be even more of a troublemaker for the coast of Mexico and it certainly is for South Texas. This is Babs, a tropical storm could bring flooding rains to the Philippines. We're getting flooding rains in Texas once again today and some of these isolated thunderstorms are severe. Tropical weather systems are affected by so many variables. We constantly monitor the situation. If someone is safer by watching the Weather Channel, that's what it's all about. This season, bring a familiar color into your garden. The Fiskars Power Gear Pruner, unlike any pruner you've ever seen. A revolutionary new gear design dramatically reduces cutting effort through a rotating handle that evenly distributes the cutting force to a precision stay sharp blade. The Power Gear Pruner, guaranteed for life.
Fiskars, a familiar name, geared for the garden. What if the kids made the toys? What would their busy hands do? They might need... in Texas, which have turned deadly this weekend. See where they're headed, and also a uh, front moving a with a little more speed in the Midwest, carrying some heavy rains with it, too. We'll take a look at the cool front that's going to bring a big change to chillier weather after we check the tropical update, which has been a little bit busy lately, especially in the eastern Pacific Ocean after uh, things were making news left and right in the Atlantic. Uh, we've had 12 named storms. The eastern Pacific was lagging behind and now has caught up rapidly. More on Hurricane Lester and Hurricane Madeline in the Pacific in a minute after we take a look at the Atlantic Basin, looking at a tropical wave in the Caribbean and another one in the Windward Islands. First of all, to the Caribbean and Gulf, we're seeing a very nice weather situation in the Gulf of Mexico, but a tropical wave nonetheless moving very slowly through the Western Caribbean Sea. There is some wind shear here. Uh, winds coming up from the south and then turning around to the west at high levels. So that's really not that conducive to development. But there seems to be an upper level trough that's sort of moving along as this tropical wave slowly moves with it. So what we need to watch is whether this bowing, this curvature of the upper level winds could even bow a little more. That would be a high pressure ridge that would be forming over the tropical wave and that would be more conducive to development. And this is one of the areas on the map that development does happen more frequently this late in the season. So we'll keep our eye on it. A lot of heavy rain in Jamaica. Looks like uh, moving on into Nicaragua and Honduras overnight. Probably by this time tomorrow, Cozumel and Cancun will begin to get some heavier rain, if not then, by tomorrow night. A pretty strong tropical wave moving now into the Windward Islands. Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, Martinique, Guadeloupe, Antigua, St. Bart's, all getting rain. But it looks like the high level winds are coming out of the west, and that is wind shear. We don't expect this to develop in a, an environment like that. Another small disturbance uh, several hundred miles out to the east of that, again, not getting favorable conditions aloft. Meanwhile, K, Tropical Depression K, is just about gone, but we do have strengthening Hurricane Lester that's well south of Acapulco now. We could see an eye very nicely on the infrared photography a while back. It's still there, though. There are aircraft going in right now into Lester and into Madeline, a hurricane as well. Lester, as of the most recent advisory, 180 miles south-southeast of Acapulco, winds are up to 105, they could get higher, moving west at 8, and pressure actually measured at 973 millibars by some aircraft reconnaissance. Now, we still have hurricane warnings from Salina Cruz to Acapulco and watches out to Zihuataneo, but there's a chance that these could be dropped later on today as Lester moves a little bit further out to sea. The only thing you've been seeing on shore now, east of Acapulco, is high cirrus clouds and maybe some outer rain squalls. It would get worse if Lester got a little closer, but Lester is actually retreating further from the coast and strengthening. You can see all the banding that's going on around the southern semicircle of this storm. Strengthening, but the good news moving away. We hope to see those hurricane warnings dropped later today. That could happen, so stay tuned. Now, Madeline has picked up to 85 miles an hour, centered 140 miles south of Mazatlan, but very close to the coast, drifting north at 5 measured at 982 millibars. We have hurricane warnings from near Islas Marias to Mazatlan. That means hurricane conditions are imminent near and close to the coast, including flooding, squally rains, and those wind gusts. The watch, hurricane watch up to Los Mochis and around the southern tip of the Baja. And now we could see on the edge of this photograph a very healthy hurricane and some of the rain already impacting the coastline. So heavy rain, flooding, some coastal tidal flooding also uh, very possible with this storm, which should move northward and eventually impact the coast, probably somewhere north of Mazatlan. That's our best forecast right now, but we have to watch for the eventuality that it moves further out to the, to the west and could be close to the Baja. 
Meanwhile, out in the Western Pacific, we bid adieu to Zeb, which was a super typhoon. Now Babs may be a typhoon in the next couple of days, beginning to develop, especially on the south side. Philippines getting affected again, but this time the southern Philippines not impacting the same area that Zeb did, and that's actually good news, although the threat that this could be a typhoon. Well, back in the States, a front moving rapidly through the Midwest with some quick moving showers, but a lot slower in Texas. That means more flood potential. We'll talk about that on Weather Center coming up next. Dangerous flooding plagues parts of Texas, and the situation may get worse. When and where more rain is likely next on Weather Center after your local forecast. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and this is Craftsman Innovation at its best. Craftsman RoboGrip pliers are the world's first self-adjusting one-handed pliers. With just a simple squeeze of the spring-loaded handle, the jaws automatically adjust for a perfect fit. The Craftsman RoboGrip works on faucets, pipes, and hoses, or for auto repairs. It has hundreds of household uses. And now Craftsman RoboGrip pliers are available in a versatile three-pack with a 9-inch curved, a 9-inch V-notch, and a 7-inch straight RoboGrip. A $70 value for only $40. Is CNN.